Binge Pipe expected a bit more gratitude for presenting You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe, we're not the bad guy here. Cookie Masterson here. You know, I'm banned from every zoo east of the Mississippi River. But don't worry, it's for a much weirder reason than you'd think. You know, with this many players, you lose some of the personal attention. So I just want to say, player six, I see you, and you matter. Okay, it's time. Time for question one. First, wake up and smell the art. If you took a big bite of Botticelli's The Birth of Venus, due to the tempera paint the Renaissance artist used, how would it taste? Mmm, fishy. Mmm, grainy. Mmm, fruity. Or, mmm, eggy. And how do we do? Mmm, no. Tempera paint, or egg tempera, contained egg yolk and was popular among Renaissance artists. The tempura shrimp at my local hibachi grill is the real work of art. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Next, Lord of the Lies. I don't know about you, but at the end of a long, stressful day, I like to unwind by watching a reality show where the people yell over one another. Well, if the cast of Vanderpump Rules enacted the same rules as the petulant children in Lord of the Flies, who would have the right to hold the floor? An angry Kristen holding a coconut, a furious Lauren holding a starfish, an irate Jax holding a conch shell, or an enraged Lisa holding a machete? Who picked what? No, but I think I remember that episode. In William Golding's classic Lord of the Flies, the person holding the conch shell had the right to speak during meetings. And if you've read the book, you know that it culminates in a very tense fundraising gala. Why do we do it with three? Here's one I like to call... A reality show named Desire. And let's step out on the veranda for a dis or dat. Dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven names, and for each one I want you to tell me if it's a cast member of the reality show Southern Charm, or a character from a Tennessee Williams play. Don't think too hard, I'm only giving you a few seconds to decide between Southern Charm, or Tennessee Williams. And you're all doing this together, so look alive. Okay, let's do it. Blanche Dubois. Most of you deserve a group hug, but player seven, uh, tough one. You failed to live up to my already very low expectations. Binge Pipe customer retention protocol has been activated. Sounds like it's screw time. That is the truth, Cookie. Screwing during a question makes life a little tougher for all the other players in a variety of enjoyable ways. And you'll receive a monetary bonus for anyone who answers incorrectly. Yeah, okay, they get it. Just one more benefit of your Binge Pipe membership. I don't need you anymore. 
Coming up next, GPS, Godzilla positioning system. So, Godzilla is on his way to destroy Tokyo, but can't seem to find the island it's located on. What does he roar in frustration? Look sharp. Okay, Player 7 just screwed the room. You don't mind reading the fine print, right? Let's see who got it. Honshu, the largest of the four major islands that make up Japan, is where Tokyo is located. It's so like Godzilla to get lost. That would never happen to Mothra. That's why I'm totally Team Mothra. Hashtag Team Mothra. Very nice screw job, Player 7. Enjoy your cash. Here's one for you. Please, no mo. Let's say The Simpsons Mo Sislak left Springfield in season 40 to start a bar in Japan. What would his new establishment be called? Mo's Izakaya, Mo's Kuko, Mo's Sashimi, or Mo's Edamame? Okay, who chose what? Can't do anything right, can you? This answer feels lonely. An izakaya is a Japanese bar. <laughs> Round one is history. Let's look at the scores I'll be sending to your parents. Currently, player five is in the lead. And as a counterpoint, these players are highly valued, but their scores are not. Looks like someone needs a little more help. Round two screws screw even harder. And you'll net more cash for each player that answers wrong. So don't forget to use them. The rest of you better answer fast before you get screwed. Oh, and by the way, all the cash in round two is doubled. In case you care about things like that. I am feeling joy. Six trombones is not a parade. How about this one? Double, double, toil, and sprite zero. If the Globe Theater had a special Coke machine using ingredients from the Witch's Brew in Macbeth, what custom-flavored soda would you not be able to sip on while watching Shakespeare? Diet Cherry Vanilla and Hemlock Coke? Hip Extra with... Oh, this'll be good. Player 4 just used that screw. Embrace the change. Or don't. Hope you like what you picked. Maybe try... cheating? <laughs> Blood of a Virgin is not one of the ingredients the witches use in Shakespeare's play Macbeth. I'm a simple guy. I just like sparkling Dasani water with a little lemon and a little finger of birth strangled babe ditch delivered by a drab. Oh, excellent screwing player four. Spend this wisely. Oh, and I see we have some name changes. Yeah, I love that screw. Hey, question. We'd like to offer you a chance to gain some content while also losing some other content. Would you like a question where everything is spelled correctly or a question where everything is spelled incorrectly? Choose on your devices now. Here are the votes. And now, we'll fulfill our promise and deliver your content. Try this on for size. A question where everything is spelled incorrectly. In which movie does everything get destroyed at the end? The Road, Dr. Strangelove, I Am Legend, or One Direction, This Is Us? Well, what do you know? Player 8 decided to screw! Quit fidgeting and answer the question.
you guys pick? You won't like this, unless you're into failure. In the final scene of this Stanley Kubrick film, the Earth gets bombed to smithereens. And don't even ask me to spell smithereens. Way to screw player eight. Have some cash. 'Twas then I learned to heed the winds of it. Up next, the finer things. Things get a little silly around here sometimes, which is why I like to look at serious works of art. George Pierre Seurat's famous painting, A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte, is a classic example of pointillism featuring a tranquil scene in a park and. Wait a minute. Is that? What the? F it couldn't be. There's a naked lady in this painting. There's a monkey. A monkey on a leash. A man in a tree wearing a cape. Or a clown. No, wait. Three clowns. Let's see how that shook out. Keep your mind out of the Guggenheim. Should have picked this. A Sunday on La Grande Jatte does feature a woman walking a monkey on a leash. I wish all classic paintings featured monkeys, but The Last Supper would be kind of a mess. Na, 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 na. It's time for Octopus Coffee Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein. Octopus Coffee Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein. It's monster. Known to eat flowers. Octopus, coffee, Queen Elizabeth, or Frankenstein? Okay, what'd you pick? Queen Elizabeth I's favorite snack was violet flowers that had been candied. And now, a golden one. What would the Untouchables have listed as their hashtag squad goals? Catch that Pablo Escobar team, arrest Bonnie and Clyde ASAP, catch Richard Nixon in the act, homies, or bring down Al Capone, yo. So who got it? The Untouchables were a team of lawmen who arrested Al Capone. Hashtag Elliot Ness Queen. It's time for the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap it on your device. The faster you pick a right answer, the more cash you make. And more than one answer can be right. But each time you're wrong, I'm taking some cash away. And don't forget... We may miss on you! It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Names that stand for something. Pick the words that the acronyms stand for. Good luck.
Coach Couch wins! Nice work, Player 5. Look who's on top now. Enjoy the view from up there, because tomorrow you'll probably realize... You don't know Jack! Truffles and tea cakes! Teakles and truff truffs! They are equivalent treats. If you asked me to choose, I'd say, oh, that's a muse, because they are precisely equal to me. Sorry, what was the question? Hey, this is the Ritter family. We're unable to answer the phone right now, so leave your message after the beep, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Also, it's come to our attention that someone has been taking our outgoing voicemail messages and putting them online for other people to listen to. I don't really understand it, but apparently they've gotten quite a following. Who would want to listen to that? My neighbor told me there was a think piece about it in the New Yorker. Anyway, please don't do that. We're just a normal family that values our privacy. Thank you. Oh, also, our daughter Linda called off her engagement to Brad Corey. Apparently they had a big fight. If I get more details, I'll try to add them to our next outgoing voicemail message.